Maybe it's a new year, changing jobs, changing cities, out of a relationship. Maybe you wake up one day, you look yourself in the mirror and you say, damn, really thought you'd be further ahead by now. Whenever it is, we've all probably gotten that feeling, that pit in our stomach, that it was time to reinvent ourselves. I wanna show you how to reinvent yourself in three steps. I was watching the movie Gravity the other day. You know, where Sandra Bullock's in space. And there's a scene towards the end where she has a fire extinguisher and she's out there in space and she's spraying it because she has no other way to get to her destination. <laughs> Pretty intense. What's scary about that is that you probably know that in space, unless something hits you, once you're on a trajectory, you're gone forever. There's no turning back. You will just keep floating and floating and floating further and further and further away into the dark abyss. That's because there's the principle of momentum. And if you remember, an object in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. Your life works much in the same way. Most people, if you look at how they're operating through life, they're sort of sleepwalking through it. They don't really stop and pause and say, wait, did I actually choose this life or was it chosen for me? See, if you really want to change your life, reinvent yourself. What that's really saying is I want to change the momentum. I want to change the direction so I'm not just floating mindlessly through space. I want to metaphorically take my own fire extinguisher and just give it a little nudge, like a little Sometimes that's all it takes to nudge you in a different direction. So I have a question and there's no judgment here, but if you really took your life the last 90 days and you were doing that for the next five years, would you be satisfied? Would you end up in the spot you wanted to be? And if the answer is no, unless you stop that momentum, what's going to change? So the first big point here to reinvent yourself, I call this the pain teacher. You need to actually recognize it and invite it in and learn from it. A bit of a personal story, if that's okay. I find that these help you connect dots. 10 years ago, I was broke, living in my mom's basement, uh, cold gray Seattle, super isolated, didn't have many friends. And I was just looking around and I saw people get jobs that they weren't stoked on, commit to relationships that they weren't stoked on, just kind of go on autopilot, like this momentum, just took them and sucked them away. And culture and society kind of has this like mantra, well, yeah, life's a bitch, then you die. Suck it up, right? So I went along with it throughout college. You know, I worked jobs that I really didn't like. Every Sunday, I would just dread getting up for Mondays. They even have a term for that now. It's called what? The Sunday scaries, where you're sitting there Sunday night, you're freaking out because you know the next day you got to do it all over again. And then you get that little taste of freedom on the weekends. And let's be honest, most people party so they can't even enjoy it because they're so exhausted or you have so many chores to do or so much of life just happens in those two days because that's for you. That's when you can really live because the other five days of a week, you're so drained by doing things you don't want to do, by working with people you don't choose, by getting up and commuting to a job that paying the bills. But like, if you're honest, you wouldn't work. I was there too. Most people try to numb themselves from the pain because it's painful. They drink a lot. They party a lot. They just zone out. They watch TV because it puts them in a hypnotic trance light state or social media. Their screen time is probably like 10 hours a day, right? And I get it. I was there too. But the first way to change your life is to not numb yourself, is to become conscious of the pain and become aware of it. And so when I really paused and took an inventory, I was like, this is what I don't want right now. I'm experiencing like, let me not run away from this feeling. Let me channel this. Let me like tune into the pain teacher and what this is trying to teach me. So if you're dissatisfied right now, that's a good thing because you can learn important lessons that if you don't forget are some of the strongest motivation in the same way that if you're walking on a hot pace, the pain is telling you to go find some shade, go put on some shoes or you're going to burn yourself. Negative emotions are a call to action. That's all they are. If you have a headache, that is a sign that you should drink water. If you have a pain in your chest, sometimes that's a sign that you are sick. In the same way, physical negative pain translates to, hey, fix something. It's a warning sign. It's like a gauge on your dashboard that flashes and says, pull over, check your engine. I think your mental, your emotional pain that you're experiencing on a day to day, the negative feelings are just another gauge on your dashboard flashing. Hey, check something, change the momentum, dude, because until you do, until you become aware of it, it's just going to continue. You're going to wake up every Sunday night with the Sunday scaries and you're just going to go, go, go. And the momentum's just going to carry, carry, carry you further and further floating in space with the fire extinguisher into the dark abyss. So now that you have what you don't want, 
you're ready to start tapping into the fun part. Step number two is to start creating this 2.0 vision of yourself, the pleasure, who you are in five years if everything goes right. This is what we call designing a dream character. Just like a movie or a game, they have characters in them, don't they? The writers design them. They give them all the traits, storylines, quirks, uh, habits, rough edges that people can connect to with them before they film the movie. You need to do this for yourself. What this does is it allows you to tap into one of the strongest emotions out there. You know what that is? Excitement. Real excitement. Like, the reason people are in a different mood all of December, because Christmas is building up, they're excited, they're looking forward to something. The reason people turn it around when they're in a job and they got two weeks of vacation coming up and they like are in a good mood is because they're excited about something. The reason that when you fall in love and that's all you think about is that person because it's new, you're so excited about them. So if you really want to change your life, get really excited about this new character, this new version of you. When I was in my mom's basement, like, yeah, it sucked and I was in debt and I was in a lot of pain, but I also got real, real excited about the possibilities. And I would see people online talking about making all this money and living freedom and digital nomad and everything that sounded really cool. And I, I would read these books like The 4-Hour Workweek and it would talk about living a life on your terms and of freedom. And it got me so excited. I was like, holy cow, this is possible. This is what's crazy to me is some people see that online. I think in, in this year, you notice the conversation and they say, oh, well, screw those people. They'll be in such a negative headspace that that's not even possible that they could do it. That was never my spot when I didn't have it. I was never like, screw that person for having it. I was like, holy cow, that's possible. That's awesome. Like you made 30 grand in a month. I'm making like maybe two. How did you do that? Teach me your ways. So a sub point here is when you start seeing people further ahead on this path of you, never compare, never get like down on yourself. That's an example of how you can channel excitement right there in that moment to fuel you instead of being crushed by it. Three areas that you might want to take in this vision of you, work, rest, and play. Work. What do you want your job to look like? What do you? How do you want to make your money? How much money do you want? To make? One thing here: set an aspirational hourly wage. When I was 1.0 Clark in Seattle, I set an hourly wage for a thousand dollars an hour. I was like, that is the craziest. Like a thousand dollars in one hour of work? That's crazy. That's an example of an aspirational hourly wage. I was making probably ten dollars an hour. <laughs> Rest goals: These are things that you want to be. What do you want your body to look like? How do you want your relationships to look like? What is your lifestyle like as this 2.0 you? And your play goals: These are adventure. Again, I set the goal. I never really traveled much. I wanted to go overseas to Southeast Asia. I wanted to backpack around. I wanted to see the world, like the four-hour work week was telling me. And it was only in setting that goal that I was able to tap into the excitement of that energy and like flash forward and see myself doing it and be like, oh, that looks like fun. Okay. And then it motivated me to take the actions and do it. And the last step of this, revisit this every single morning and every single evening. Put it somewhere where you can see this like dream character of yourself. Look at your goals every single day. When I did this for the first time, um, I believe it was in Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich that I got it out of. It said, set an ideal target number for yourself and look at that thing every morning and every night. In fact, post it right above your bed where you can sit up there and look at it. So I did. I set a goal of I want to make $10,000 in self-generated income by the end of this year, which is crazy for me. I was literally a janitor in college. I worked like three jobs at once and I was just listening to these books on, on audio. And so I did. I cut out this little uh, extra wallpaper brick that I had on my wall to try and make it look fancy. And I wrote, by the end of this year, I will make $10,000 of self-generated income. Again, had no clue how that was going to happen. And so I started a podcast, time of my life. But what was really crazy to me is at the end of the year, it's time to do taxes. The most fun time of year, right? And I'm adding up all the invoices. I'm like, okay, how much did I make? Wasn't 11, wasn't nine. I made over $10,000 of self-generated income by the end of the year. That's when my jaw hit the floor and I'm like, holy crap, there's something to this designing that dream version of yourself and seeing it every day and working towards it. I started doing exactly what I'm telling you. Design the 2.0 you, write out exactly how you'd think, feel, and act and see it every day. I'm not even kidding. Conservatively, I'd say 60% of everything I put in that vision in college, in my little dorm room, when I had nothing, 
has come true. Not instantly, not without work, but it came true. Everything from touring internationally in a professional band, which is just freaking crazy, like opening for some of the biggest names, playing to 30,000 people when I didn't even have a band. Being here in a hot environment in Arizona with a dog and a relationship on a golf course instead of like cold, gray, gloomy Seattle, a million YouTube subscribers. Again, I'm not bragging. I'm just like inspiring you that when you inspire yourself and you revisit it every day, this stuff is crazy and it works. That's what I did in college and uh, it evolved since then. We have this, it's called the manifesto. This is something we ship out to every single one of our metamorphic clients. And our whole program is on that. It's like helping you identify this 2.0 you, but also like shift into it and totally transform your subconscious mind in 10 weeks. Pretty cool. No pressure, but if you're interested in that and this is hitting with you, resonating, I'll link down below where you can speak to one of our coaches for free and learn more. Step number three, and this is the most important one, because it's not enough to just identify what you don't want, to identify what you do want. You actually have to bridge the gap. Let me tell you a quick study, because I think this sums up this point wonderfully. It was 2001, and there was a group of around 250 people in the UK. They were all trying to get fit, get their six pack abs back. It was beach season around the corner. I hear there's some great beaches in London. So the researchers split these people into three groups. Group number one didn't do anything. They're just going to say, hey, track how much you work out. Group number two, what they did to this group is they said, track how much you work out, but also here's some like motivation on why you should work out, on the benefits of improving your heart health, on uh, improved immune system, and like all the other health benefits. They gave them a motivational talk. Now this is where it gets cool, because the third group, they did the same rah-rah motivation, told them to track everything. But they also did one more important step. They said, hey, write a specific time and place that you're gonna work out. By the end of the study, groups one and two, 35% of them worked out at least one time a week. But the third group, who had a specific time and place action plan of how they were gonna make it happen, had a 91% completion rate on one workout a week or more. It's easy for us to listen to the YouTube videos. It's easy for us to read the self-help books. It's easy for us to go to the motivational events and get really inspired. But unless you have like a specific action plan of how, I hate to say it, but that study shows that it's in one ear out the other. So back to you, what is your plan? How are you gonna act to bridge the gap every single day? We're talking about identity shifting here, and this is super powerful because it's not enough to just design this 2.0 version of you. I found that you have to reinforce that identity by doing something every day that confirms it. So if the goal is to become a YouTuber, well, film, write, do your videos every day. And in doing that, at first it feels fake, like, oh, I'm an imposter. What, I'm going to be a YouTuber? I don't even have any videos. I don't have any subscribers. But as soon as you start doing the videos and learning and researching and getting camera gear and like playing around with it, you eventually start to reinforce the identity that I, this is just something I do. I am a YouTuber. I like the principle ready, fire, aim. Most people ready, aim, fire, but they get caught in the ready and the aim. And when it comes time to fire, they're like, oh, is this lined up perfectly? Should I, should I realign the sights? Maybe this is the wrong target. That's where they get in their head. What you have to do is ready, fire, aim. Yes, get your setup, but then you just go and then you readjust after. A lot of people use preparation as a form of procrastination. Ain't this the truth? They say, oh, I just got to prepare a little bit more. I got to learn a little bit more and then I'll be motivated to take the action. But that's not actually true because if you're waiting for motivation to take action, you're gonna be waiting for a real long time. True professionals show up every day regardless of how they feel. If I had waited till when I felt really inspired and really like tuned in and in flow every single time before I filmed a video, I'd still be at like 50 videos. And that's just being honest. Professional bodybuilders or people who have a really aesthetic physique will tell you if they just waited till they felt like working out, pretty much every day they don't actually feel like working out, but they're a professional. That's why they get themselves to go to the gym. And then once they're there, they feel motivated and the workout is business as usual. So don't feel like you have to wait for motivation to do what you want to do. Motivation is sort of a myth in that way. And I find that a lot of the motivation comes from actually taking that first step. Ready, fire, aim. If you want some help on this, we're happy to talk to you. I'll link down below where you can get a free coaching call with one of our coaches. Speaking of taking action, procrastination is one of the biggest things people say of why they don't. So what I'll do now is I'll link up right here our guide to being 80% more productive than most people. It's not what you think 
we're going to talk about how to overcome your procrastination because at the root of it is not laziness or that you don't know what to do. I'll see you in that video. Take care.